Twice a Week Podcast, Episode 14. Welcome back to another episode of Honkies on the Rise. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been thinking about saying that? Six days. Oh my. Brad told you to say it, didn't he? No, no, he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> I kept it in silence so everyone could be surprised. That's a good name for this podcast. Honkies on the Rise. <laughs> <laughs> Honkies on the Rise. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, let's see if we... Whoop. Uh, Super good. Oh, it happened again. It happened. There's a lot of people that like they or they watch and they anticipate us touching our feet. Yeah, yeah. Now there it's just go. a recipe for disaster that our couches are more turned in. I know. A lot of people like the farts too. We're, we're starting to actually get YouTube comments now. Uh, it's gonna be the thing that does it. I know. I'm glad people think they fu- they're funny, and then some people, like I think, are a little little bit into the farts. But <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Oh, man. Please come fart on me. <laughs> yeah. They do the time stamp in the comments. <laughs> you click on it. <laughs> That's all they watch. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> so, seriously, this makes no sense. How long has shampoo and conditioner been around? Not long. On the grand scheme of things. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Long but enough, I mean, long enough. Long enough for this problem to arise and be able to be fixed. Okay. You always run out of shampoo before conditioner. Yeah. Always. Oh yeah. Why don't you make the shampoo bottle bigger? Or the conditioner bottle smaller? Oh, see, that's how they get you. You just can't let me have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, yeah. No, we're I'm on thinking the same. outside the bottle. Yeah, we're on the same. <laughs> We're on the same fucking page here. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Shampoo and conditioner, that's paired together. Make one bigger or one smaller. It's every time. It. I bet, I bet it's because if you run out of both at the same time, you're more likely to switch brands. However, if you run out of shampoo first and you still have, let's say, Garnier, Garnier, <laughs> you still have Garnier conditioner left, but you ran out of Garnier shampoo. Uh, and right there on the definitely. Garnier bottle, it's saying, use with the Garnier shampoo mm-hmm. for optimal shine. You're going to be more inclined to go buy more Garnier shampoo. I bet that has something to do with it. It must be, like, they're like, oh, we're not changing this. Yeah. Like, there's definitely a reason, yeah. It's got to be. Very so. frustrating, though. It is frustrating. It happens to me all the time. Well. Once every couple well, of years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I mean, the people do do the, the two in ones. Yeah. Which never work how they're supposed but to. But yeah, work. what's about what's that about? That's probably not it's good fake for you. News. And then Suave or Suave, whatever you call, it. they got three in one. They got four in one. Yeah. Yeah. How are you gonna tell me that I can wash my body and shampoo and condition my hair mm-hmm. and use it as lube? <laughs> <laughs> Can you? <laughs> Don't do that. Because <laughs> now I'm <keep> wondering. <laughs> My friend back in the day uh, used Vaseline as lube for some anal sex. Because <laughs> he's like, dude, I'm about, I'm about to have sex in the bedroom upstairs. Is that my old house? He's like, you got to give me something. Like, you, you have to give me something. And all I could find was Vaseline. <laughs> and then we read, he's like, actually used it. And of course, like we're reading the label after the fact, and it's just very clearly states Do like for not. external use only. <laughs> yeah. Good lord! Yeah, the girl's fine though. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. It is important. That's why I was <laughs> made sure to say that. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> good. I want to name drop him so bad, but I ain't. Doing I know it. who it is. You don't have to name drop him. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one guy. And he one is one of our only viewers, so I'm happy that he'll see it. All right, uh, I have a few notes written down. Okay, I'll uh, <laughs> open this. Yeah, good up. idea. <laughs> I'll read them in order. That's fine. So the first thing I have written down <laughs> is probably the dumbest thing ever. But I was thinking, I ate, I ordered Papa John's the other night. I was studying all day, didn't eat anything, so I was like, I need to eat something right now. Ordered Papa John's at 10 o'clock, ate the whole pizza. I have a gluten intolerance as well. 10 p.m.? It, wait, it was late. I don't remember what time. I, I studied all day, didn't didn't eat anything. 
So I ordered a Papa John's pizza. I have a gluten intolerance. Not supposed to eat it, but it doesn't really matter that much. So I ate the whole thing, which has a lot of gluten in it. Went to work the next day and was just farting up a storm <laughs> at work. And I just thought of something and wrote it down. And all, all it is is the gluten had me Putin. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing that I've written down. <laughs> so now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> I wanted to talk about the influx of great white sharks in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm, and tigers. Talk about it. And tigers. And tigers. Yeah, you're you right. about that? Oh, bar. yeah. They tagged, like, what, four of them at Navarre? It was like eight. Or I think it was like mm-hmm. eight or nine, and they're all, like, n- nine feet plus. Yeah. And, they and they're just... they're catching them off the beach and off the pier. Yeah. And then Jake. Deep water. Killers. Jake said he, Jake was coming out to the beach a few days ago to go for a swim, and he said Zach Taylor, who Zach Taylor is the best fisherman in Pensacola, he texted Jake and said, "Hey man, like I probably would stay out of the water at the pier at Pensacola Beach Pier right now because I guess he was fishing off the pier and he saw like a twelve foot tiger shark at no Pensacola way. Beach." Pier. Well, I'm not even surprised. Not even surprised anymore. Yeah. yeah. So why? It's weird. Someone's about to get got. I hope not, dude. dude. But why are there so many great whites and tiger sharks here? It's got to be an evolution thing where because of the fish are going away, mm-hmm. they're having to, like, man up and get used to warmer waters. That's what I was – that's exactly what I was going to say, the sea spiracy thing. Because they usually – It's because well, of the nets. Yeah, they usually hunt. <laughs> they hunt in colder waters, but the colder waters are being overfished. We don't overfish in the Gulf of Mexico because right. we know what we're fucking doing. Yeah. And so the, all the great whites and tiger sharks, the big predators, are having to come here to have enough food to eat. Right. That's what – could be happening that's my theory it it makes the most sense it is cold waters that are being overfished it's always cold deep water yeah yeah so i mean they they i mean there's argument they could have always been here and we're only tagging them and seeing them now but i i I don't think so i think there is overfishing and i think they are moving into warmer waters but like shark fishing is has been so prevalent here they would have been hooking up on them Mm -hmm. but they weren't but they weren't no. Like if you I caught mean, a tiger bull sharks, black tips, all that shit. If you caught a twelve foot tiger shark here ten years ago, you would have been front page of the news. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Front page world news. Yeah. Which I mean, this shit is making it up there. But yeah. Thankfully, old DeSantis, love him or hate him, he is an environmentalist. Yeah. And I want to hear him talk about this issue, DeSantis. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're listening. Yeah, dude. That's so. I like DeSantis. That's so crazy. I was also thinking like. Uh, all this seaspiracy shit we're talking about, like, what can we do? Like, are we dicks by making jokes about it? I eat nigiri every week. But we live on the Gulf Coast, and all the restaurants we go to are it's locally caught fish, Yeah, which is pretty sick. Well, yeah, I mean, we're I bringing awareness to it, and we surf, and I don't want the ocean to just get completely fucked. Yeah. You know? Because, like, all, these, all this environmental stuff, the overfishing, the nets in the water— like, what that is going to cause is it's going to cause the Gulf, or not the Gulf, but the oceans to, like, if you throw off the balance in the ocean, it's going to become uninhabitable. And I don't want it to be uninhabitable, therefore making me not be able to surf waves. Right. That's the whole shit. That's the whole shit. Yeah. The entire of the shits. Yeah. Is that. Stop your multi-billion dollar industry so that I can catch waves. That's, <laughs> my waves are more important than your industry. It, right. I promise. It's like, how do we... <laughs> It just sucks that people live inland. It does. Because that, that's the issue, right, is getting the fish to people who can't get the fish. Yeah. <clears throat> it's very few, though. It's like, I think I saw a statistic. It was like 75% of the nation's population is, like, within 50 miles of the coastline. Mm. So that's good, but. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people, they just don't. Most people don't surf, and most people, like most, what's the, st- the statistic, like what, 98, 99% of people will never be out on the open water, like on the open ocean, even yeah. if they live near the, near the, near the, the coast, a lot yeah. of people don't ever go out in the water, if they do go near the water, it's like once a, once a year vacation, and they're just splashing around in the, in the shoreline. Right. So a lot of people don't really have like a huge appreciation yeah. for the ocean. Seaworthy boats are expensive and charters yeah. are expensive and mm-hmm. and so it's easy to are just scared. It's easy to just ocean. go eat seafood, go to the fish market or whatever and it's whatever. Right. But it's hard to I don't know where that's coming from. If where all that's coming from is harming the ocean, like 
what do you do about it, you know? Right. And it's, I had no idea about the net stuff until, what, a month ago when yeah. you told me about yeah. conspiracy. I had no idea. That yeah, and we're, like, on the coast and shit, and it's even harder for people, like, it's hard for anyone if you're not immersed in a culture or in an area where that stuff is, like, prevalent, mm -hmm. like, just see things being mm -hmm. around the ocean and stuff, it's hard to care about it. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, that's not me. Like, I live in the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, was, I was thinking this past week when I was in the airport going to New York that, uh, like, we, we were talking about Seaspiracy and the um, – the effects of like the nets are the, the big problem and like i go like i was getting a coffee somewhere and like most of the places now they're all like uh paper straws or whatever environment environmentally friendly uh, stuff but like we we dropped that statistic i just looked it up it's only 0.025 percent of the plastic in the ocean comes from straws so mm -hmm. is, right which does it do anything yeah so like do you think that's just something to make people feel good or yes. it's like it's exactly what it is it's just like they taking the fucking something. indian off the land of lakes you're just hopping on a train so people think that you're doing a good thing yeah and really it's having no effect on anything yeah there's yeah. Uh, native, no positive positive point. native american reservations are still trailer parks and they don't have access to clean water and they're Which alcoholics is and they're still the exact same as they were before the fucking indian was on the lando lakes box yeah yeah, it's Messed ridiculous. Up. It doesn't fix anything. Yeah. The only thing that actually fixes anything is legislation. And then once you get into speaking out about legislation, yeah, I mean. Well, we talked about that the other night after we filmed the last episode that a lot of the times we go in the right direction and then we completely miss it and we hop on a train with something that has no effect whatsoever and yeah. we just miss legislation with something that could really make an impact, you know? Mm -hmm. You just keep going south looking for the North Star. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Until legislation changes, whatever cause you are behind, no matter what it is, it doesn't matter until you get the legislation changed, because that's how you change things in the United States, which is beautiful, you know, right. but it's also like, you know, you, you can't be stupid if you really want to change something. Don't stop. Don't stop it, you know, having your plastic straws changed to paper straws. Educate yourself enough if you actually care about that to know that, oh, this actually isn't making much of a change. We need to actually look further into this. Right. Boom. That's what happens is a lot of times people are like, they get behind a cause and then they think, oh, I've made this one minor change in my life. I don't use these straws anymore. I use paper straws. I've done my part. It's not true. Right. If you actually care about the cause, you have to look deeper into it and you have to make sure stuff changes. And that sheds light on how sad the sh like division of our country is right now because that makes legislation like that so much harder to get passed mm -hmm. and that's the one thing that needs to happen for yeah. it to really change mm -hmm. same thing with like I went to a Black Lives Matter thing at the graffiti bridge at one point and it was great they, it was peaceful whatever and then they had all these people coming together and all that and it was cool like whatever um, I thought it was cool and then I thought there was going to be actual change because the mayor was coming to talk the sh um, Sheriff Morgan was coming to talk mm -hmm. But then what ended up happening is they all raised a f – somebody decided that the core of the problem was the statue on Palafox. Like, that was what was causing all of the racism. <laughs> yeah. And then they took it down, yeah. who is which it I don't – Huh? We don't even know. I don't who know who is? was on the statue. I never knew there yeah. was a statue there. But apparently that became the focal point somehow. I don't know who switched the focus to that. Right. But that became the focal point. And then sure enough, they were – like, they put up a little bit of a fight – like whoever they is and then they took the statue down and then that kind of just dispersed everything like oh that fixed the problem yep no it, it didn't fix anything all you did was take a statue down yeah it didn't fix anything no legislation was changed no inequality was fixed at all police brutality is still a thing yeah you like know? it didn't change anything no like reform so. and so i mean the yeah who goes and like they act like people go and worship these statues, and they whisper in their ear to go be racist. Yeah, <coughs> I like, still uh, to this day don't know who was on that statue. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't even know what's there now. And I don't know the locale of any statue that is supposedly racist anywhere in the U.S. But I guess they're all gone now. And guess what? It makes no difference to me because I didn't know in the first place. Mm -hmm. I get the whole thing, hi you know, history cares. belongs in a museum. I get that. I understand that, you know. And no, I know. A I lot mean, of I them do. Too. They were, you know, they had they had slaves and whatnot. I get that. But still, that's not the core of the problem nowadays. 
with yeah, that at I, all. I don't care. I don't care. I don't. They could have blew the statue up with TNT, and it wouldn't have made a difference to me. Right. I don't. I don't know who was on it. I don't know what's there now. The statue literally has no effect on people's actual day to day lives. Redlining, on the other hand, and gerrymandering, on the other hand, still completely exists. Right. If you take a geographical map of <laughs> where cotton grows the best in the United States, and then you compare that geographical map to p- impoverished neighborhoods, they almost line up perfectly because that's where the slaves lived and that's where they remain in, 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 the, in the hood, in like the, the projects right, now. Right, right. I'm not like a huge, I'm not, a, I've never been like a huge advocate for going and changing all that, like just because, I mean, the whole white privilege thing, but it's like, damn, like you really want to make a change, like don't, don't sell out your cause for some monument. Don't sell out your cause for some plastic straws. You know, right. if you really believe and want to change something, you got to look deeper into it yeah. and make sure legislation's actually enacted, right. which is really hard to do. You know. So. Yeah, we got into some deep stuff here on this one. <laughs> Good yeah. lord, it's getting funny. Whoa. Yeah, we need to do something funny. <laughs> yeah. Start celebrating, man. Whew. I can't believe he did it. No, I can't. Of course, I believe you did it. <laughs> I told you you were going to do it. I can't believe you were so stressed about it. Yeah. Well, it, the, statistically, most people don't pass it on the first try. That's why I took so long to study for it. But How long was it? You got three and a half you? hours, and it took me like I got done pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. The longest part was the – well, for any test. what I, I researched test-taking methods before I took it, and that really helped me. With any test you take, it's good to – you go through the test once, answer ones you know, and then flag ones that you aren't sure about, yeah. and then finish the test and then go back and review the flagged ones because there were probably – there were probably six or seven questions on there that had I not flagged them, like I would have I would have got them wrong, but there were other questions later that kind of gave me the answer to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. God fucking damn it. I forget every time to do it at the beginning. It's okay. We'll put you can put we can cut that what you just said in the beginning. Oh nice. I guess we have the power of or an Mason editor. Can. <laughs> <laughs> it's my job. Yes, he can. Just do an auto tune to voice. Not over. your job, you're volunteering. Like and subscribe, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. That's what that's we need. One. That's going to sound beautiful. <laughs> Especially when he has a camera on him. Mm-hmm. Oh. One day. One I know day. I finally showed my face in the last episode. Yeah, you came and sat down. <laughs> oh, yeah, you sat on the couch you for a second. Oh, no. The, the, the last last one, when we just posted, I did that little. <laughs> oh, yeah. You did, <laughs> did the that, little bit. Dude, I did that little bit in in our pl- the playroom mm-hmm. at my grandma's house. I was wondering. My gra- or my grandparents' house. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. Heck yeah. What? Have you not watched the episode? I thought I didn't. You little <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I watched most of it. I honestly I cringe that, at myself. I know. I that can't that last one is the only one I've watched. I can't watch these. It's hard for me okay, to watch yeah. them. I hate looking at myself talk. <laughs> I, know. I hate hearing I'm, my voice. Yeah, my yeah. voice pisses me off. Yep. Yep. I think that's normal, though. I think most people dislike it. Really? Most pe- I've, I, I think it's unhealthy if you obsess over how you sound and stuff. Yeah. It's probably good to have some just constant something. Judging. Yeah, dude. Every time I hear Judging I, yourself is good, so you can always try to be better. Yeah. Just every time I, if I heard my voice and I wasn't me, I'd be like, dude, this fuck guy needs that to guy. shut <laughs> the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> It's obviously fine. I, I mean, guess, I, dude. Thank you guys for l- listening <laughs> to this. How long have we lived together? <sighs> I haven't bounced yet. Dude. Four and a half, five years? It's got to be five years. It's got to be five years. Oh, my God, dude. Do you remember when we were living on York Street? And we're like, <laughs> oh, we'll, be, we'll mop the kitchen. Like, it'll be good. Oh, we mopped the kitchen. Did we mop it that night and then wake up the next morning? Yes. I think so. Yeah, we mopped it at we mopped it at night. We're like, oh man, the kitchen looks great. The mop was outside. That we need to start with that. The mop mop was sitting outside with water in it. Okay. Yeah. That's the root of the fucking problem. Yeah. So we just don't we just don't know that much about that kind of stuff. 
Like, oh, we got a mop here. We'll mop everything up. We've been cooking a lot. It looks great in here. We had a black and white checkerboard kitchen, which was kind of fucking sick. That was really cool. Yeah. Wake up the next morning, and there is 237,000 maggots <laughs> on the ground. It was a horror movie. I almost set the house on fire. Dude. Also, what we had a lot there is cockroaches, and this might help some people out, kind of like the startup disc situation where you want 10%. Yeah. Is elephant ear plants, which I they're my favorite plants to have around a house. I mean, I Beautiful. love it. It makes your house a fucking jungle. Mm-hmm. It fills up space. Doesn't matter what your mulch around it looks like because it hides it, so Let's you don't have to pull weeds and shit. Well, I'll have me, I'll send the picture to Mason of me. Yeah, I'll pull it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a picture. Um, cockroaches eat the roots of elephant ear plants. Really? So that's why we had so many cockroaches in our house because they were specifically ev- elephant ear? specifically elephant ear plants. There's another plant I can't look up the look up a plant that looks like an elephant ear, but it's not. It's not as leafy and not as beautiful, but it's like a nice compromise for the cockroach thing. Yeah, because it just fucking brings them in by the masses. Yeah, there were a lot. Of I mean, we would open our fucking silverware drawer and there would be three cockroaches in there. Mm-hmm. We've got allocation. Alloca- Colocation and xanthosoma. So it's occasion. <laughs> it's one of the occasions. One of the occasions. What an occasion. What, what, what an, an occasion. occasion. <laughs> what an occasion this is. <laughs> Dude, I remember one time I was I was sleep I was sleeping on the floor. I had a uh, mattress on the floor in my room. No, yeah, it was several. We all did. Yeah, we I, all were floor sleeping mm-hmm. for like a year. Yeah. So I was sitting there, and I had my girlfriend at the time laying there with me, and we were talking about ghost stories and, like, spooky stuff, and then we, like, tried to go to sleep, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we just hear, <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, hey, do you hear that? <laughs> yeah, what is that? And so I get up, turn the light on, and it's a roach this big just right on the wall where we were sleeping. Oh, just, they, were, they were everywhere. And we got a flea infestation in that house, too. Mm-hmm. We'd be sitting on the couch watching TV and just... Ugh. Dude, fleas? I will say it, fleas are worse than roaches. I would, I would... Oh! Oh, yeah! I would rather deal with a couple roaches than, like, a, a flea infestation. I'd dude. rather uh, spiders. Yeah. And I'm arachnophobic. Mm-hmm. Dude, fleas Self-diagnosed. are bad, dude. Or when they... If they get in your hair... That has never happened to me, but that is terrible. Dude, oh, dude. The worst are the yellow flies, like, come end of May, early oh, with June. the north wind? Those but things yeah. suck. They hurt so uh, bad. Terrible. Why can't dragonflies do a better job? I, right? <laughs> I agree. It's their main food source. They just can't keep a handle on them. I wonder if dragonflies are endangered like butter. Can Boom, I'm on it. How can we overfish yellow flies? What attracts them? They they live in the I mean, dunes. I know that at the beach. I don't know why. We got to figure out a way to set traps for them or something to just kill them all. There's no way that they're of any benefit to the ecosystem, dude. The fungus guy. I was telling you. No, I was telling this to Jake. There's a there's a guy who makes specific funguses that are pesticides and they're 100 percent effective. So this and like organic and shit. Organic. Like so this guy. It's mm. a, so the. So we got, I forgot what the documentary is called, but this guy, he was born to like a, a, an academic family, very affluent. He was very educated, but he had a very bad stutter, and he, he, he couldn't look at people in the eye. So he's talked to people like this, couldn't look him in the eye until he was in his early 20s. And he's like, you know what? I want to try oh. – Dragonfly – wait. Yeah, the Union for Conservation of Nature now considers the dragonfly vulnerable to in- extinction. We got our answer, baby. Whoa. What? <laughs> so don't kill the yellow flies because they need to eat. Don't kill the dragonflies. No, I mean don't yeah. kill the yellow flies because that's their food oh, source. Oh, because they That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, But why are the dragonflies dying? That's not good because dra- I love dragonflies. Maybe the yellow flies are arming up. We need to get. What if the yellow flies are fighting back? We need to join the team of the dragonflies. <laughs> that sucks, dude. I love dragonflies. I know. Have, Have you ever gotten bit by one though? They oh hurt. Fuck. I I didn't even what? Oh dude. my! You God. can get bit by one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, they really? Get they bit oh, bad. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Dude, mm. so 
why, the reason for why dragonflies die, the tenorolas are genuinely weak, and they cannot fly very well. So whatever the the tenorolas are, it's probably the connection between the li- the wing and the possibly yeah. So the, that's probably the reason. So they're not the best flyers, making them very vulnerable and mm. scary. Hey, do you know that butterflies so can't see their wings? I believe it. They only got like a day to live. I, that's <laughs> <laughs> Verbatim what I said whenever really? my mom told me that yesterday. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> That's right, learned that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I we can't, need, dude. He's like, oh, cool. You're welcome. <laughs> I can't see my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Can anyone see their butthole when they look down? <laughs> you know. No. Think of, well, think no about it. We this. need a mirror. No, no one can see I it. I mean, small percentages, but some people are born as, like, hunchbacks. Some people are born with extra lim- or not extra limbs, but, like, weird, you know, maybe they have a... <laughs> 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 oh, dude, I, if we, get, we need to quit. We need to stop this. What if... <laughs> Someone just shit their pants yeah, already. What if what? <laughs> <laughs> what if what? <laughs> mm. <laughs> like every time. No, no, I get it too no, no, no. The timing is off. <laughs> oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah. So every time you shit, you have to clean your belly button too, or something. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't. I've never. Seen, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that though. Usually, see all kinds of weirds. El- There's thing about elephant titus, and I'm just thinking like you, something happens where you get a bulge there, and it brings your butthole up and out. <sighs> I mean, someone probably does have that, <laughs> and they're like, I'm sure I somewhere think. at some point someone's had that, but it's yeah. like the big HIPAA thing, probably not known. Hi- yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the future, twice a week viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Gang. Mm. What I was saying earlier, this guy, I forget his name, I forget the name of the documentary. 20 something years old, stutters, can't look people in the eye. So we ask his friend, he wants to, like, I, for some reason, he wants to try mushrooms. It's psilocybin, hallucinogenic mushrooms. So his friend sells him some. It's an entire bag, like a big bag of them. But this guy was raised in a very strict academic family, so he didn't know dosages or anything, so he ate the whole bag. <coughs> Goes up on this hill, starts tripping. There's a storm coming. He climbs a tree. It starts lightning and raining, and so he's holding on to the tree. But the biggest thing in his life that he's insecure about is his stuttering. So for like five or six hours, he's holding onto this tree in a thunderstorm, and he's repeating to himself, I need to stop stuttering, I need to stop stuttering, I need to stop stuttering, all this stuff. And so then the next day, or he goes home, goes to sleep, wakes up the next day, and he's walking down his apartment, and there's a girl that he thinks likes him, and he's really attracted to her. And she says, hey, how are you doing today? Or she says something to him, and then he responds. <laughs> talks, he talks to her perfectly, looks her in the eye. Asks her on a date or something. Doesn't stutter once. Wow. Goes on living his life. The whole documentary didn't stutter once. He's looking the ca- cameraman in the eye the whole time. He's like, one session, I was completely fine. So we started this company. <laughs> well, probably <laughs> like a nine sessions in one. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. That's the key. Yeah. So he started this company, though. It's got like 150 employees. He's a very rich person now. I- he doesn't say it, but it, he is. Yeah. And so they create pesticides for certain species <clears throat> based off of fungi. So it's all natural, all organic. For example, there's this one, like for, for termites, there's this one fungus. It grows on wood, and if a termite walks over it by accident and gets this fungus on its body, it's so detrimental to the termite population that when they get back to the entrance to the colony, there's, there's guards at the colony. And if they sense that fungus on the termite, they two, two – termite guards take him and they take him away from the colony and they cut his head off and kill him and then the two guard termites commit suicide so that they they don't spread the fungus to the rest of the colony 
And so what they did is they found this fungus, and they they did something, and they al- – I don't know if they altered it or found a different fungus, but it was the same thing, but it was pleasing to the termites. And they created – they turned it into a natural pesticide. So they'd stay infect one termite with this, this fungus, and it goes straight into the colony, and it wipes them out like that. And they've done it – they did it with termites. They did it with ants. They've done it with, like, a bunch of different insects. It's pretty cool. How new is this? Within the last two years, the, the this documentary came so out. So this is going to just completely change all of, like, the termite companies. Probably. Well, the, the agenda – the agenda of this documentary was to get people to trip on hallucinogenic mushrooms. That's the whole agenda of it. Is what right. it like. Because there, there's another section of the documentary talking about like cancer patients who took it and they're okay now. Right. And then people taking it and um, feeling like a sense of well-being and worth or whatever. It's, it's trying to get everyone to, to buy into this higher state yeah. of consciousness. Which is like cool, and like I know a lot of people are behind that, and I've never fully tripped on mushrooms, so I can't really right. have an opinion on it. Well, from personal experience, I know that it would be a great thing if more people explored it. Yeah, because it would make this world a kinder place, mm-hmm. and a a lot of people need to experience what they call ego death, mm-hmm. which is what happens when you fully hallucinate. Yeah, your perception of this world changed changes even you don't matter you're s- everybody is a selfish being and that just goes away which you, is great you all of a sudden just care about just oh i'm alive mm-hmm. this is so great like look at look at these things look at what i'm looking at like this is so beautiful just being able to breathe is the best thing ever yeah not like mm-hmm. ultimate power or whatever you know what i'm saying yeah but with that being said there needs to be huge disclaimers on even thc people who aren't mentally stable shouldn't smoke weed like weed it, weed is not a hundred percent safe no if you have the, if you have the gene of you know schizophrenia like if your mom was schizophrenic or the gene of th- whatever you, d- you just don't want to do it because if you're slightly on the edge it will put you over the edge yeah. but that being said there, that's a very small percentage of people that have that but if this can be these trials or whatever you would call it, like when drugs become decriminalized and become legal and instead of going straight to the pill from these huge pharmaceutical cupi- companies and you start trying out, like let's try THC, let's try MDMA therapy, let's mm-hmm. try psilocybin therapy. Absolutely. Just do a, do a workup, do a family history, see how you're feeling, do the test before you do it. That's the best thing ever. Just to be able to go on a psychedelic journey and to be watched over by a physician mm-hmm. in a safe place, it I mean, it'd be phenomenal. It would change our world. Yeah. Well, it's the thing is, it's not. It doesn't kill you. Nothing. It you can take. You can eat two or three bags of mushroom. That it's not going to kill you. Right. As long if as long as it's the same species, it's not going to kill you. Right. Right. You're right, going right. to be completely fine. That's the whole thing. Yeah. And like what you're saying though, like it, you, you might try to harm yourself if you have underlying conditions of schizophrenia exactly whatever. and same thing with like some people can't drink certain alcohols because it triggers certain things in their in mm-hmm. their bodies you just gotta tito's like <laughs> 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 being like <laughs> what is tito's trigger in your body mason <laughs> a whole lot of throw up <laughs> mason has never drank alcohol anywhere near or with us ever never yeah. Mason um, doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs. No. Nope. Nope. Mason, honestly, you're a God fearing man. You I believe am. You believe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Actually. what I'm saying is, as like people who may be watching this, or you know, it's generally older generations. Is as soon as they hear the term drugs, it's you're obviously you're immediately a delinquent. Like I don't want anything to do with you. Like you, you can't think for yourself. You're stupid. Why would you put these foreign things in your bodies? Yeah. It's important to do the research. And like, like what you eat and everything. Care about what you're putting into your body and do do the research that keeps you. I just we cut this out. I completely lost it. But um, no, 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 no. You're going the right down the right track. Yeah, dude. Like it's a, it's not stupid to try psychedelics, but it is stupid to just take them to take them. I agree. You know. Mm-hmm. So it changed. I 
Are we doing okay, Mason? Yeah, we're good. Dude, I, I, I was listening to uh, the Joe Rogan podcast. Like I saw. Who's Joe Rogan? I, uh, dude, Wait, Joe just... Rogan has a podcast now? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he just did stand-up. That's crazy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was listening to Joe Rogan's podcast, and there's this guy that went on this this doctor or physician or somebody, and he was doing this. Uh, he he was talking about the effects coffee has on people, oh, and he yeah. did this, which is known, but he did this experiment on how he, if he quit coffee, he was like, I have a daily coffee drinker. He's mm-hmm. actually that dude's a journalist. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. You, did you see it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he talked about he like quit, went clean, completely quit it for like mm-hmm. a month, and then like eased his way back into it. And like during that month, he was talking about how he just would like look at people differently in terms of in like they'd see lines of people in st- at Starbucks, just like they need their fix, you know, they need their fix. And so something that is so commonly like um, accepted in our society as mm-hmm. coffee, you know, it's not really look down upon and then you right yeah people try to your... act like it's not a drug yeah well coffee if the lit i'm the not sci- hitting on coffee i love coffee the scientific <laughs> literature shows that coffee is the most popular psychoactive drug on the planet and what a psychoactive drug is is it changes it changes the chemistry inside of your brain right and that's what coffee does like if you take an aspirin i mean technically food changes your brain chemistry too. Yeah, yeah, but if if you take if you take a an aspirin or an ibuprofen, it's it's just a it's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. So right. it changes your body a little bit. But coffee, caffeine is a psychoactive drug. Yeah. The main the main thing it does is it changes your brain chemistry. So you're right. It, people do get very addicted to caffeine. I've oh, been fuck, I've yeah. been addicted to, I've been addicted to caffeine. You know? Yeah, I'm totally guilty of it, of course. I mean, uh, it's it's in movies, it's in shows. You hear your parents say it, like, don't tell me that shit yet, I haven't had my cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Like, how is that different than fucking... It's not. <laughs> and then if you think about it, like, <laughs> look at, like, we're drinking we're drinking white wine right now. Think about all the processes that had this, this liquid had to go through before it got to our mouths. And then think about... If you go up to Jay, where there's cows eating grass, and they take a shit, and then a mushroom grows out of it, and you eat that mushroom, and you have this godly experience with it, which one's more natural? Right. You know what I mean? And which one's illegal? Yeah. It's <laughs> really strange. <laughs> yeah. It's just strange. I don't, I mean, there could, there is probably, you know, um, bad agendas behind the whole alcohol thing or whatever. Maybe not. But it's just, on the surface, it's a weird thing how this natural fungus growing out of the ground can land you in prison, but this very unnatural thing that has to go through several processes before it reaches your table yeah, is completely legal and Dude. socially accepted. It's and r- it's, it is weird. And I've never tripped on mushrooms fully and had this crazy experience ever. I, w- I would like to. I've never done it. Yeah, But just as an outsider looking in... It's like why? Why is that the case? Well, all of that, and this kills thousands of people a year, and three point nobody dies from three point sure. three million people die from alcohol-related causes a year. Three point three million. Three point three million. I saw so, it like today. With that, I, I want to fact check. I saw it on Instagram. I'll fact check it right now. Well, but I saw that today on Instagram. And that I was number like, could potentially include like. Drunk driving incidents and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. I mean, ODing or alcohol poisoning is still, I'm sure, over a million. Yeah. But I feel like if you're on mushrooms, a car, the the idea of a car would scare you enough to make you not drive. I don't know anybody in my friend group that has tripped on mushrooms that has ever dared drive a car. No, you don't. That's the last thing that you want to do. Yeah. So it's weird. It's You got to ask the question, why? Why is, why, like... Just looking at it as a, a from a neutral point of view, it's it fungi were here before humans. Fungi were here before plants. Fungi were here before plants on planet Earth. So why is this thing so outlawed? However, this thing that is, is that we call alcohol, you have to you know 
include unnatural yeast to it. You have to run it through all these unnatural processes. It kind of makes you sick if you drink too much of it. You know, like it can kill you. You start withdrawing within twenty four hours, have which is what a hangover is. Yeah, it's withdraw. So why is this okay to sell? Why is this a multi billion dollar industry? But the thing that makes you more because con- consider it, it a multi do- multi billion dollar industry. Exactly. That's why. It ha- I mean, it has yeah. to be right. Yeah. There's too much logic from every other avenue. But then it's like you Money have to run this all. those you have to run this through so many processes though. With psilocybin, you you can just go out in the woods and find a shit ton of psilocybin containing mushrooms. There's but two it makes, processes. It makes you more considerate. It makes you your ego die. Right. So why is this one being sold at Walmart and why is psilocybin putting people in prison? Right. Yeah, I mean essentially there's two processes to mushrooms, right? It's picking them and then i guess well three picking them making sure it's not the bad kind that yeah. can hurt people which there are oh, yeah. mushrooms that oh, kill yeah. people and then selling it mm-hmm. <laughs> i guess that would be the three yeah which is far less than 20 yeah and all are natural and i will say Frying up some shiitake mushrooms with some butter and garlic. Mm-hmm. As an Italiano. Say it again. He's, he's one, as an Italiano. <laughs> he's one of my favorite dishes. Oh, he's the best. A, a red wine a reduction. A uh, red wine a reduction with the garlic sauce. <laughs> you try to, that is, that's try to cook up a bottle of wine with the reduction sauce. <laughs> you, know, you know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. It, it's a good documentary. It's good. It opens. You don't up. remember what it's called? No, but I can find it on Netflix. Yeah. It's on Netflix. You'll be able oh, to okay. find it. Go on Netflix and type in mushrooms. It's a guy. He's wearing glasses. He's got a beard. One of those. You can find it. No, it's a d- it's a decent beard. Oh, okay. He's a regular guy. I almost cut my hair off today. Like, what do you mean, cut your hair off? Like the classic Jace. What I do when I cut it, really? I like your hair long. Looks good, but you do it. You do whatever you want to do. I See, appreciate well, you, you saying thi- that. Well, the thing is, though, you have straight hair, so you like when my hair when my hair was that length, it was like a daily like let's try not to let this hair get in dreadlocks kind of situation. But with you, I mean, it's just right. like you just run your fingers through it and you're good. Your long hair is sick though. Looks sick. <laughs> I agree with that. They look you. dope. Um, but you look like a sexy beast right now. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Thanks. I haven't sh- I I, shaved. So I was face. thinking that, I mean, everyone knows I have a monstrous forehead. And I was thinking, like, damn, no. maybe I. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, maybe I'm fucking. Maybe it's receding a little bit. Like the past few weeks, I was thinking that. Mm. And then I was just at, with my grandma in Portland. And I saw a baby picture of me. Uh-huh. I was born with the receding hairline. I was born with it. You don't have your hairline hasn't receded a bit. I have lost zero hair, and I almost made an appointment to get hair plugs. No, your your forehead is just huge. <laughs> <laughs> it's retarded. It is like no, because with receding hairlines, like you have a completely straight hairline. But I do have a little bit of a receding hairline because it start it starts on the corners. Well, no, mine does widow's peak a little bit, but I was born with it. Like I, I was two years old in this photo, laying on the ground doing this stupid. Also, my mouth is fucking huge. This ridiculous <laughs> smile. I was just born Charlie Charlie Brown. Yeah, and it's widow's peak receding. Like as a, if you just put some wrinkles on me on that picture mm-hmm. and just cut it off at the neck, you know, mm-hmm. you like I could. Easily be 25. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. And I always thought that I got it from my dad. Yeah. Mm-mm. It comes from the mother. Eat from uh, my mama. Everybody, mama. Eat from my mama. I'm eat a bakey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Nah. You're <laughs> so whenever I start losing my hair, it's going to be like... Uh, <laughs> Here we go. 
You'll be f- we'll you'll be fine bald though. Just shave that. Well, I have a good shaped head. Yeah, that's fine. what I. Th- the benefit of being Charlie Brown is that it's round. Yeah, so that I don't I won't like automatically look like a white supremacist or something <laughs> when I have to shave it all off. But I figure by the time that it starts happening, let's say l- r- realistic, probably th- I'll say thirty five. Yeah, like myself, like tenish years, it'll yeah. probably start getting thinner. Well, th- they say your mom's dad. Yeah, is he's bald, so it's it's coming. So okay. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, the technology is already. You can get. Yep, 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 yep. Hey! Thank God, I thought it wasn't gonna happen. I have zero farts. I also have to pee, so if I try to fart, I'll pee. Go see, somebody okay. in the somebody in the comment section already put down the time marker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys stop. If you think it's funny, that's great, but. Please don't beat off to the farts. Because <laughs> I feel like some of you are doing that. It's fine. Hey, let's not be exclusive. Don't flick your bean either. Don't flick your bean to the... <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, but I figure the technology is already here. Like, hair plugs is real. Many people do it. Like, And it fucking works. Yeah. You take hair from the back of your head and you put it up where it's thinning. Yeah. It works great. But I figure in 10 years, think about the shit that's happened in the last 10 years. Yeah. God damn it. I hope that there's just a pill you can take, you mm-hmm. know? Like, that's not, that's going to happen. Yeah. Especially being, like, the percentage is ridiculous how many men, like, go bald by the age whatever. Mm-hmm. Th- it's something that's being worked on every day. It mm-hmm. has to be. Yeah. Oh. I'm good. Thank God. Why well, you can just tell. My grandpa Frankie, he had a full head of hair till he dropped dead of a heart attack at fifty six years old. Mm. <laughs> oh, fifty six? I think fit in his fifties, yeah. Damn. He was young. My mom's sixty. Yeah. Well I'll probably die in my fifties, maybe sixties. Which is pretty optimal. Honestly. I'm honestly I want to not be bald so badly that I'll probably 27 club it. Well, if you go bald, <laughs> if you go bald, I will shave my head with glee as long as you make a wig out of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Could you oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we got to do that. We got to Photoshop that one. Uh, yeah, sometimes dude, soon. It, your man. hair on my head. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, dude, I because I hate having curly hair so much. Really, dude, dude I dude, hate I'm it. envious of it. I wish I really? had more curly hair. See, I'm hair. envious of y'all straight hair. Nah, dude. dude. My brother, he's got like more flowy, like curlier hair, and uh, <sighs> things that dude have. Sometimes. I'm personally it. not envious of your hair, but I think that you should like it. I just feel like it's it's more in, in, like in shape. Like you just kind of keep it there. Where like straight hair just can flop guess, around wherever. Man. It's just like. Do you dislike that it's kind of just one style or nothing? Is that what you dislike? No, no, I dislike it because it's like. I don't know. I like. I would like to be able to like slick my hair back, like just slick it back, or like have like a show off your small forehead. Yeah, or like a swoop or something. But I just can't. Like it's just the, It's just like a. It's like a clay mold. Well, you can. It just, like, that's you now spending an hour every morning in the bathroom versus 42 seconds. Which I'm not going to do. Right. I'm not right, spending right. an hour yeah, in the yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. bathroom. Yeah. So I'm just stuck with fucking You would blow air. dry and straighten every morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is weird because you think of, like, why the, why? The, why? Why does hair curl? What is that? Because when you think about hair, like, look at my arm. If you look at my arm hair, like it's pretty straight. Why does hair curl? Like, um, what you got? If the follicle follicle angles into the follicle der- fo- shit follicle angles into the dermis, then the hair will cur- curve as it grows, causing it to curl. What is that? Oh, mean? so the angle of your follicles are different than the, mine. The, yeah, so I guess the angles of where the hair is coming out of your head. So probably what it. my follicles are like is they just straight. go straight up and yeah. and yours are like diagonal. Dude, I wonder what you'd look like with a buzzed head. Like a black would, dude. <laughs> if we get 4,000 views on this video, I will buzz my head for the next episode. 
I'm not kidding. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Instagram. Share it on everything you got. If we get 4,000 views Please. on this episode, I will sh- buzz cut my head for the next episode. People do the work. Anyways, that's strange. Why is that a thing? Just jeans. Jeans, I guess. I don't... Just freaking jeans. Capris. about same distance part right there. I'm going to sacrifice my shot so we can get Mason on the shot for a minute at the end. Here, you can focus it in. Let's see. Everybody say hey to Mason. What's going on, guys? Get out and focus. This is my little this is my little crew, little nook and cranny right over here. Just there got my is. little space where I sit, I think. Mason's the editor. Mason does a lot for us. I try. We appreciate him. He looks good on camera. Appreciate you guys. He also shreds, and he's a he's a good friend of ours. Yeah, dude, you you are really good on a longboard. Thank you, dude. I haven't ridden a longboard in a minute. Yeah. This summer, You've been hanging out with us too much, buddy. <laughs> dude. Yeah. Since El Sal- the El Salvador trip, and then I don't even know. I've just been I've been shortboarding all summer. Well, the, well, the waves have been so good here this summer. Mm-hmm. We've had like yeah, solid swell all summer, which is really unlikely. Yeah. Typically, the winters are good. Dude, that last hurricane swell we had, the one that hit South Florida. Yo, I surfed with Mason that day for a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. You, Nolan? you that know that I broke was... my board? No way. Yeah. Dude, well, I left. I got, call- I got caught on the inside. I just paddled out when I saw you. When, we, like, when I said, what's up? I had just gone out there, and then I got caught on the inside. Absolutely worked, and I was like, fuck this, and I just left. And then I came back later at, like, sunset, and it was super fun It there. was so, so good. good. I surfed the end of the pier, too. That was pretty fun mm-hmm. until it got crowded. Everyone and their mom showed up. It was good. That was pretty solid. I surfed. Dude, I went down, and I, I went and visited. <laughs> <laughs> I went and visited Zach Orr at Park East during that day. Oh, uh, isn't he? He's working Water Boys Surf Camp, right? No, no. Zach no. Orr works at Sacred Heart as a PA. Oh, uh, never mind. Yeah, I didn't know. I don't really know him. I've just heard about him. So, yeah, me and Zach Orr surfed at Park East during that day by ourselves. No one else was surfing. I saw DJ Denby. DJ Denby was working the Water Boys Surf Camp. That's who it was. I saw him down there, but he wasn't surfing. But, dude, it was. It was the best left that I've surfed on the Gulf Coast. And dude, it is so good down there right now. Like,. It this is. Friday morning, I'm going to surf there because oh, Friday yeah. morning looks clean. So if you're not working, I'm off. We we'll surfing, dude. Let's Cause do it, it. That sandbar's super sick right now. Hell yeah, yeah, dude. It was like I caught several eighty to one hundred yard lefts with with Z. Just no big deal. I was when on, was this? The last hurricane swell oh, we had. You're, what sorry. was? I forgot Still the name of the hurricane. I don't know. Was it Elsa? Elsa? It was Elsa. Yeah, Elsa. yeah, yeah Hurricane yeah, yeah. Elsa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, dude, it, dude, it, was, it like, was so good. It was like shoulder to head high. I dropped it. I was on my quad fin stealth. It was like a, a five eight stealth, and just dropped in and just like pumped oh, as fast as just I could at Park East. Hauling, just hauling ass. Got two or three good turns in. Pulled out the back. Dude, I love. Like it was so great because usually when we get the swell, it's just bigger than you're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. But you have to surf it, yeah, <laughs> because it's the swell. Yeah, this one was just or exactly like you get worked, I didn't but ha- like you're just fucking. Thank I you. I wasn't wearing a leash the whole time. It's either like a very short window, like forty five minutes, mm-hmm. or it's just huge yeah. That was a day. Yep. That day. All one day, day dude. was a full day. All yeah. day, even at sunset when I was surfing, it was good. Like yeah. it was still just as good as it was like midday. Yeah, man. So good. good. Nolan just happened to come in time. In town, just in time, he just That's got this the most score. classic. He Nolan. broke his board too. We both broke our boards in the same session. Really? Yeah. Oh no! I was that was the most mad I've been. He's going to school in Barbados, right? Mm-hmm. So we're going to visit him at yeah, Soup Bowls. He's going to med school in Barbados. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. He'll make a good doctor. Yes. Congratulations, Nolan. Yeah, yeah. Whichever camera. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I guess we can we wrap fucking it lock it up. Hey. Thank you guys for watching. We're twice a week. Let's have a chat.